By now, the whole world has heard about Andy Ruiz's shocking upset of Anthony Joshua. Hardcore boxing fans and casual viewers alike are left wondering how this chubby Mexican-American contender knocked out the dominant unified heavyweight champion. So how did he do it? Much of the talk about this fight is based on speculation from the fans and media about Joshua's mental state going into the fight. While this is perfectly valid to do for any fighter who suffers a loss, in my opinion, the principal reasons that Anthony Joshua lost were his own weaknesses and Ruiz's particular strengths. Let's look at the patterns round by round. From the opening round, it's clear that Ruiz is focused on coming in behind a jab and is prepared to throw with Joshua every time he tries to punch. Ruiz parries well, puts his head slightly off center, and jabs with Joshua as his head stays mostly in the middle. Conventional wisdom says that you should jab with a jabber to disrupt their rhythm, much like Ken Norton did famously against Ali. And when he's not punching with Joshua, a small back step makes him reach while Andy stays safe. Now, Joshua has the right idea jabbing to the head and body while moving around the ring, but despite his long reach, each jab is a risk. This moment here, one of the first times Joshua commits to a straight right, reveals one of Joshua's biggest flaws. He overcommits and doesn't recover gracefully with a smooth lateral step or backwards lean. Ruiz is eager to counter, though he doesn't find his mark just yet. Here again we see Joshua out of position after throwing as he ducks down awkwardly. Not only does this leave him vulnerable, but he can't see what's coming next. Again, he doesn't pay for it quite yet, but wait and see. This bad habit of shelling up and ducking down without keeping his eyes on the opponent is something we've seen in past Joshua fights, and they definitely cause him to get hit unnecessarily. In the second round, Ruiz gets his reward for the jab, landing follow-up combinations, and gets inside where Joshua only ties up. Joshua's jab, on the other hand, is becoming less effective. Ruiz is simply too effective staying just out of range, making Joshua reach dangerously with lead rights. This control of distance is impressive considering the disparity in height and reach. One thing I noticed about Joshua's jab to the body is that his head is not really off-center when he throws it. Ali here, for example, jabs to the body with his head correctly off-center. In this round, we also see Joshua back straight up with his head right in the middle and his hands too low to block. In round three, Ruiz continues to use his own jab to get inside on Joshua, but when he actually gets there, Joshua throws a smart combination. That left hook starts it, then the right uppercut, and back again with the left hook while Ruiz's right hand was down. Joshua's follow-up straight right at distance is perfect until he once again defends the return punches by falling in awkwardly to mid-range. Swinging lefts and rights at this distance with his head stuck in the middle is exactly what a shorter, faster counterpuncher like Breeze wants, and it's the reason Joshua gets caught. Contrast this kind of trading with Jermaine Williams exchanging with Jared Hurt. Notice how the head moves with the punches so that it isn't static in the line of fire. Both fighters are throwing, but Williams is avoiding the shots targeting him while he throws his own. It's a crucial defensive skill on the inside that Joshua seems to lack. Joshua then tries to fight back and again ducks down awkwardly behind his guard with no visibility at all as to what's coming next. And here he does it yet again. And here he is with his head again stuck in the middle after throwing an overcommitted right hand and yet another overcommitted right hand with his body weight forward and his right hand too low. When Ruiz leaps with his ambush combinations, Joshua retreats to the ropes and is totally stiff. Ruiz is able to punch through the gloves as Joshua's head is static, instead of at least rolling with the shots to deflect the blows. The next few rounds are relatively quiet, with Joshua's best punch being a lead left hook as Ruiz reaches out, anticipating a jab. A combination of fatigue and ingrained habit keeps Joshua's head square in the middle, and this time he gets caught clean while throwing a jab to the body. Like we spotted earlier, his head is not off-center while jabbing downstairs. At the end of round 6, Ruiz decides to go to the body with real commitment, and a fatigued Joshua loses even more steam. Coming in at this low angle behind the jab is perfect for Ruiz's relative size, and Joshua lacks the proper vision to see it. 
These exchanges in the seventh leading to the knockdowns and ultimate stoppage encapsulate the most important key to Ruiz's success. First, Ruiz stands up to Joshua's punches without folding once again, counters him while he's out of position, and then exploits his stiff stance and lack of proper defense at close quarters with fast combinations to overwhelm Joshua. Ruiz knew exactly how to win the exchanges on his terms, and Joshua was ill-equipped to trade with the shorter, quicker man. The thing I'd be concerned about if I were Joshua is that these are old habits. They will likely still be there when the rematch takes place. That doesn't mean he can't change or improve, but his team needs to rethink his defensive approach or address the lack thereof. If Joshua commits to his jab and feints more with it, moves his head during and after exchanges, preserves his balance while he's throwing power punches, and actually maintains visibility while blocking or backstepping, then, and only then, can he hope to avenge this devastating loss. So who do you think wins the rematch? Let us know at offthehookboxing.com by voting in our poll. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to share with Fight Fans.